Welcome to the wonderful world of physics. This is the quiz solutions for chapter 16 and 17. Number one, the heat loss through a glass window gives the dimensions. One surface is 14 degrees Celsius, the other surface is 24 degrees Celsius. And I give you the thermal conductivity. We're going to use the heat transfer equation, Ka times the difference in temperature over the thickness. So K, the thermal conductivity, 0 0.70. The dimensions, the area of the window, make sure you recognize it's given in centimeters, but we want this in meters. So 0 0.56 times 0 0.72 times the temperature difference of 10 Celsius degrees divided by the thickness of 2.2 millimeters, which is 2.2 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. And we get 1283 watts. We'll use two significant figures, so 1300 watts. Number two, a piece of aluminum is dropped in water. The equilibrium temperature is given. What is the mass of the aluminum? And so here's the given information. We have temperature of aluminum, 258 degrees Celsius. Mass of the aluminum, that's the question. Mass of water is given. Temperature of the water is given. Because these equations, or this equation, is based on the changes in temperature, it's OK to leave it in Celsius. And so uh, we have the equilibrium temperature of 16.3 degrees. QA plus QW, so the heat into the aluminum plus the heat into the water equals zero. One of those is going to be positive, the other is going to be negative. So MC delta T for the aluminum equals MWCW delta T for the water equals zero. And we're solving this for mass of the aluminum. So we get mass of the aluminum is negative mass of water, C of water times delta T of water, divided by C of aluminum divided by delta T of aluminum. We plug in all those values, and I left the water as 420 grams. Even though up here I wrote it as 0 0.420 kilograms, I left it as grams. And you notice that other than that term, all of the other units are going to divide out. So joules per kilogram Kelvin, joules per kilogram Kelvin, those are going to divide out. Celsius degrees, Celsius degrees, those are going to divide out. And what we'll be left with is whatever units you left the water mass in. So I'm leaving it in grams. We plug in the values and we get a mass of aluminum of 34.74. And since it was in grams up here, it's going to be grams. 4.60 moles, so that's N, of a gas are initially at pressure 3.20 atmospheres. Now, I wrote initially, but it's not going to change. The pressure in this problem isn't going to change, and so I've just uh, ignored the word initially. That's what it's going to stay. Temperature is given. What is the gas volume? So we have N, we have P naught or that's just going to be P because nothing's changing in this problem. Temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. We're going to need that in Kelvin, so 300.15 Kelvin. What is the volume? We're going to apply the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, V equals NRT over P. Be mindful of the units here. So if we do this in MKS units, we're going to use 4.60 moles times R, the gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, times the temperature in Kelvin. But pressure was given in atmospheres. If we're doing MKS units, we need that in Pascals. So here I'm doing the conversion. Multiply atmospheres by 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. And you get 0 0.0354 cubic meters. Or if you want to do it in moles, atmospheres, liters, kelvins, you can use this version of it, 4.60 moles times the gas constant, 0 0.08205 atmospheres, liters over moles, kelvins. There's the kelvins, and then we simply divide by 3.20 atmospheres. We, we see and we convince ourselves that the units work out fine because atmospheres divide out, moles divide out, kelvins divide out, and we're left simply with liters, so 35.4 liters. Question four, rigid container, so constant volume, holds N equals 8.40 moles. The pressure is 2.40 atmospheres. The temperature is 320 Kelvin. 
if the temperature is lowered to 140 Kelvin, what is the pressure? So here it's a good idea to have P naught and T naught. P1 is the question, and T1 is 140 Kelvin. PV equals NRT, and if we use the technique where we keep the varying quantities to the left, put the constant stuff to the right, that equation becomes P over T, which is the varying quantities, equals NR over V. The important thing here is that P over T is constant. Then we can say P1 over T1 is P0 over T0, and solve for P1. So P1 becomes the ratio T1 over T0 times P0. We plug in the temperatures, the original pressure, and since the original pressure was given in atmospheres, 2.40 atmospheres, that's the units for our answer, so 1.05 atmospheres. We add heat, Q equals 64,000 joules, to a mass of water, 2 kilograms, and a 1.50 kilogram copper pot. How much does the temperature change? We have the specific heat of water, the specific heat of copper. So here's the equation that the heat we add is MWCW delta T plus MCCC delta T. Notice I didn't distinguish with subscripts change in temperature of the water versus change in temperature of the pot. The water and the pot are the same package. They will have the same change in temperature. So delta T is the same for both substances. And in this line, I factored out delta T. That makes it easy to solve for delta T. So delta T is Q over MC for the water plus MC for the copper. You plug those values in and you get 7.15 Celsius degrees. And at the bottom I wrote, by the way, if you neglected the pot, it doesn't change by that much, uh, actually 7.65 Celsius degrees. So if you're doing this problem and you only think about the water and you forget about the pot itself, then the water is going to absorb all of the heat, but it doesn't go up by that much, 7.65 Celsius degrees. Number six, we have a star radiating. It's going to change in size. It's going to change in power output. And we're given the initial temperature, and we want to calculate the new temperature. So black body means it's a perfect radiator. So that just means emissivity is equal to 1. We're going to use this equation. Power is emissivity, which we're just ignoring because that's equal to 1, times sigma the Stefan-Boltzmann constant, times the area, the surface area of our sphere is 4 pi radius squared, times the temperature to the fourth power. With that in mind, I will take from this equation all the varying quantities, put them to the left, the constant stuff to the right. So this becomes P over R squared T to the fourth is sigma 4 pi, which is constant. So P R squared T to the fourth is constant. And in this line, I have P1 over R1 squared T1 to the fourth, so that's the new quantities, equals the old quantities, P0, R0 squared, T0 to the fourth. Solving for T1, we get P1 over P0 times the square of R0 over R1 times T0 to the fourth equals T1 to the fourth. Now at this point, we're going to start making substitutions. Let's go over to up here on the right, this is actually the some of the first stuff that I write down when I start the problem, but the initial power is 3.59 times 10 to the 26 watts. For R1, we don't really care what the radius is, but the important thing is the radius triples. It says diameter triples, but that also means the radius is tripling. So we can say that R1 is 3 times R0. It says the power doubles, so we can say P1 is 2 times P0. Initial temperature, 5700 Kelvin. What is the final temperature? So with these quantities in mind, let's go back down to where I'm solving the problem. And in place of P1, I'm going to substitute 2P0. And in place of R1, I'm going to substitute 3R0. Well, now you look what happens in those parentheses. Whatever the initial power was, it goes away. So we're not actually going to use the value of P0. What's in the parentheses? That ratio simply becomes 2. Same with the radius. We don't care what the radius was. This in the 
uh, parentheses, this fraction just becomes one third. So one third squared becomes one ninth. And then as we continue to solve for T1, we get that T1 is the fourth root of two over nine times T naught. We plug in all those values and we get 3913 Kelvin and I'll round to 3910 Kelvin. Another solution, another way you could solve this is just recognizing P equals sigma four pi R squared T to the fourth you could just solve for the radius because you know all the other variable, uh, all the other values. Solve for the radius, and then double or triple the radius, double the power output, and solve for the new t given the original formula. That's another way you could do this. Number seven: two liters of ethyl alcohol, 32 degrees Celsius. Put in the refrigerator, goes down to three degrees Celsius. Calculate its new volume. So it is a uh, it's a liquid. So we're going to do volume expansion of a liquid. And actually, since the temperature is going down, it's going to be a, a volume contraction. We'll use this formula: V equals V naught times one plus beta delta T. And so we plug in all the values: two liters. We have the beta of ethyl alcohol that we look up in the table times the change in temperature, which is negative 29 Celsius degrees. And we get in this line that it's going to be 97.825% of its original volume. So the final volume is 1.9565 liters. Number eight, how much heat is required to raise the temperature of 20 grams of copper from its melting point to its boiling point? All relevant information regarding copper is given in those tables in the book. All right, notice we're not melting anything, we're not boiling anything. All that the problem says is we have one temperature, the melting point, and we're taking it up to the next, uh, the higher temperature, the boiling point. So this is a situation for Q equals MC delta T. We have the mass, the specific heat of copper, and we recognize the two temperatures that we're going between. So plugging into Q equals MC delta T, we have the mass, the specific heat, the change in temperature, that's the difference in those temperatures, and we end up with 11,450 joules. And that is the end of the chapter 16 and 17 quiz. Have a great day.